Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking you through what the examiners want you to know about different ideas about the atom. They want you to know that science is a body of knowledge that changes over time as different scientists build on and develop other people's ideas. So that's what we're going to look at by looking at the different models of the atom. The story starts all the way back in ancient Rome in 400 BC and a philosopher called Democritus had ideas that everything is made up of solid particles which he called atoms. So he was the one to come up with the word atom and in those times atom meant indivisible. In other words you couldn't divide it into smaller pieces and we now know that's not true because we know that atoms have got subatomic particles like protons, neutrons and electrons. So his ideas about atoms would have looked like this solid spheres uh, with nothing else inside them. So Democritus' ideas lasted for over 2,000 years until anyone else could build upon those ideas and that was John Dalton in 1803. He agreed with Democritus that atoms are solid and indivisible so they're the smallest particles but he built on it by saying different elements have different types of atoms and an element has the same type of atoms and that is still our definition of an element today and if you've forgotten the difference between elements and compounds I'll put a link up to a previous video now. So as well as that he also said that compounds can be made from atoms of different elements joining together. So if we try and represent John Dalton's ideas as a diagram we can see here that in a piece of iron the atoms would all be the same type. We can see if we had some sulfur the atoms would be different to the iron atoms but within that piece of sulfur the atoms are all the same. So we've got two different chemical elements there with different atoms. If we join those elements together to make a compound we can see how a compound is made by joining together two or more different types of atoms. In 1897, J.J. Thomson made a big discovery. He discovered electrons and his idea was that the whole of the atom is positively charged and the electrons are stuck all the way through the atom like plums in a pudding and there's no empty space in the atom. So Thomson's plum pudding model of the atom would look like this. The whole atom is positively charged and then we've got these electrons embedded or stuck in the atom all the way through. That doesn't look like the atoms we draw these days with the electrons on the outside, but this is the first time we've got electrons being talked about in atoms. Then came along Ernest Rutherford, who was the professor of physics at Manchester University. And he did a crucial experiment where he had a very thin piece of gold foil and he fired alpha particles at the gold foil. He also had a screen surrounding the gold foil to detect where the alpha particles were going and each time an alpha particle hit the screen there was a small flash so you could see where they were heading once they'd hit the gold foil. So the results that Rutherford got was that most alpha particles passed straight through the thin gold foil as he expected and that told him that most of the atom is empty space. However, he also noticed a very small number of alpha particles were deflected off course and some alpha particles were even reflected and that gave him the idea that the alpha particles must be hitting something very small and it must be something that's also positively charged for the alpha particles to bounce back or be deflected. So he came up with the idea that all of the positive charge is concentrated in a very small central nucleus in the centre of the atom. So here's two different ways that you see on exam papers of Rutherford's nuclear model being represented as a diagram. We can see in both of these the positive charge in a small central nucleus. We've got lots of empty space in the atom and we've got the electrons on the outside of the atom. In 1913 a Danish scientist called Niels Bohr built upon the ideas of Rutherford and he said that electrons orbit around the nucleus in shells and by that he meant they orbit at fixed distances 
from the nucleus, either in the first shell or the second shell, but you wouldn't find electrons in between the shells. So this is what Niels Bohr's model of the atom would look like. We've got a nucleus in the center, got electrons on shells. So it's starting to look like the atoms that we've been drawing in class. So, so far we've talked about two of the subatomic particles. We've talked about the positive charge, which we now call protons, and we've talked about the electrons. And it wasn't until 1932 that James Chadwick discovered neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. So his model of an atom would look like this with protons and neutrons in the nucleus in the center. And we've got electrons orbiting around the outside in shells. If you've liked the video, please remember to subscribe to my channel, Revised Chemistry with Mr. B. Thank you for watching.